Now, if I am your father and I sponsor you, but you are, you know, Hattie the Hatchet Killer, um, it doesn't make any difference that I'm a U.S. citizen. It doesn't make a difference that you're my daughter, my beloved Hattie. Hattie the Hatchet Killer is not going to get a green card. And what, so what they do is they have two ways of dividing things. First is do you fit into a category that allows you to actually apply for residence. Then you apply for residence, and then they put you through this grid of excludability, the health issues, political, criminal, past immigration violations, and economic. And just to mention, this is where HIV used to come in. This was specifically uh, written to, to keep people with HIV out. Uh, the likelihood to become a public charge is still there. HIV is gone. And the problem with that is that even though you don't have to disclose your HIV positive, if you are HIV positive but you are really hurting from it, if you're really sick from it, it can affect your ability not to become a public charge. So you can back into it that way, and you need to be careful about that. But you've got to make sure that even though you are my daughter, you get through these categories that don't otherwise block you. And a past immigration violation can be going out of status. Um, if you're an adult and I file for you and you fell out of status, you've got to go home to get the green card. And if you go home, you have to stay out for 10 years. It's, it's intentionally designed to force you out and to block your return. So that's, again, why I mentioned those earlier categories, which can keep you here legally, are extremely important. Um, there was okay. a lot of discrimination in the law against us. There was a gay exclusion enacted in 1952 that wasn't eliminated until Barney Frank was able to do it in the immigration subcommittee in 1990. HIV was there from 87 to 2010. DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, is affecting us in a big way now. And there are restricted recognition of transgender rights. Uh, Congress passed a ground that most people aren't even aware of now that uh, uh, excluded persons of psychopathic personality. And the most liberal Supreme Court in the United States history in 1969 ruled that, yes, indeed, gay persons are persons of psychopathic personality. And so from, from 1952 on until 1990, there was not one gay person, at least who knew they were gay, who was admitted to the United States legally. I mean, it, it's really horrendous when you think of it. But we won. I mean, Barney Frank came out and took a lot of grief for it. Millions of other gay men and women have come out. And it moved the floor under the heterosexual world to the point where they started saying, this is crazy. And in 1990, when they did a big amendment to the act, bang, he eliminated the gay exclusion. Um, now, courts also upheld the refusal of naturalization of gays as persons of bad moral character. And they said, even if you were a nice person, your sex was criminal. So until that was eliminated by the Supreme Court about 10 years ago, they would say that the very fact that you're a practicing homosexual <laughs> meant, God, God forbid, meant that even if you were a nice person, you couldn't first prove that you were a person of good moral character. So I represented a lesbian. And we wrote in crayon, I am a practicing homosexual. And we applied for naturalization as, the, as things were starting to change. So we got to the interview, and who do we get as an officer who I always thought was a lesbian? So we're sitting in the room, and she goes, she goes through everything. And I'm saying, my God, can you see the lipstick? It says, I am a practicing homosexual. She goes through the whole thing and says, I'm going to recommend it for approval. We said, you can't. <laughs> She's a practicing homosexual. You just can't do that. You've got to deny her, because we wanted to appeal. Our idea was, we get a denial, we're going to go into federal court, and we'll fight you bastards. <laughs> so she approved it. I said, I am going to write to your boss. You can't do it. <laughs> I, I wrote to her boss, and I wrote to her boss's boss, and they never responded, and she was sworn in. She's the head of a big lesbian magazine in, in uh, San Francisco. <laughs> come out, come out, come out wherever you are. Uh, I won't go into this because we're running time, but I've got a lot, number of slides that explain the HIV exclusion, which had a really ugly history, right in the middle of the amnesty that we had in the 80s. But it was just eliminated. Effective January, HIV exclusion is completely gone. So you don't have to worry about that. Even if it's on some of the old forms, it really isn't being asked anymore. There's no medicals. If you had a case that was pending, a number of those cases are now susceptible to motions to reopen. We've just filed three or four of those. So people who were denied just for HIV positive status are, are now eligible. And just to mention, by the way, it, when, when Reagan, who was no friend to the gay community, came out with the order of exclusion by executive order, he included within it a humanitarian waiver. 
When Congress codified it and put it in the law, they eliminated the humanitarian waiver. Why? Because it was mostly gay men who were dying, and gay men don't have anchor relatives. So, it, I mean, this stuff is, some of it's really ugly. Anyways, it's gone. And it's gone because a lot of people did a lot of work, again, in the HIV community and in the LGBT community. So, um, I'll end with DOMA. Uh, DOMA is being attacked by GLAAD. <laughs> yeah. uh, we don't have a specific immigration piece in that, and the reason is that the Constitution gives enormous deference by the courts to Congress on immigration questions. They've upheld virtually every type of ugly discrimination in the history of the United States, whether you're Asian or whether you're a born out of wedlock or whether you're this or that. They've upheld that type of discrimination. They're not as likely to do that, and, and, but the, the challenge on the immigration side is a weak link, so they're challenging DOMA on a number of other fronts. The, the chances are that we can win that. If we do, there'll be a, a big uh, uh, implication for, um, uh, you know, for, for the defeat of DOMA across the board. And then finally, there's a good Board of Immigration Appeals case that recognizes marriage between a man and a woman where one is transgendered, but you do have to have amended birth certificates. Uh, and glad um, just in an amicus brief for a couple that were male and female when they filed. After they filed, while the case was pending, uh, they were one of the, the male petitioner had an operation. They found out about it in New Hampshire and they denied it, as though somehow it retroactively eliminated the validity of the marriage. So that's on appeal, and glad did the amicus brief on that. So, anyways, I hope that's helpful. It's a lot quick. I'm sorry. It's not <laughs>